Welcome to ADHD is over, a new podcast on a seemingly old label that we're going to be peeling off. Join my wife, Tatiana, and I as we journey with our family, the Wyden family, through the land of confusing information. We're going to visit both sides and let you decide because the power is with you. Welcome to ADHD is over. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. So good to have you back. It's so good to hear from so many of you through social media, through emails, uh, the ones of you that I'm coaching. It's just a privilege to work with you. You are truly aware parents. You know, we hear conscious parenting a lot, but aware parents, you know, just people committed to improving themselves and therefore improving the family. So I thank you for that. And if you're interested to check out the coaching services, just go to ADHDsover.com. There'll be a pop-up for coaching services. Just uh, get more info and uh, feel free to set up a free 30-minute Zoom exploration call with me. I'd love to meet you and I'd love to see how I can support you and your family. Also, if you have not yet downloaded our free PDF, the ADHD Diagnosis Survival Guide, please do so at ADHDsover.com. It's a beautiful, colorful, interactive PDF with so much information, so many goodies, links to studies, experts, podcast episodes, and more. So let's dive in. There's a new disorder called NSTD. Kind of sounds like an STD. What it is, is negative self-talk disorder. Now, it's pretty clear what it is, right? It's a person that supposedly, the symptoms are evident, talks to themselves negatively. Now, we all do that often, but I guess in order to be diagnosed with NSTD, you have to talk to yourself quite often negatively. You have to be someone who always negates things, always looks for the negative, right? The ha- the glass is half full. Why is this a relevant episode or a relevant story? Well, first of all, I'm here to say, gotcha, it's a joke. There is no disorder, no new disorder called NSTD. A, it sounds funny, and two, it just happens to be the abbreviation of negative self-talk. So why am I doing this? Why am I fooling you here? Why am I playing an April Fool's on January 6th, right? Well, I was on a hike with a friend, and he's someone that sort of self-diagnosed himself as a negative self-talker. So I can say this out loud because he would agree it's not gossip. He knows. And I've pointed it out to him many times. And negative self-talk is very harmful over time, right? It stems from our childhood where we feel like we don't matter or our parents don't love us or they're always, you know, negative, full of anxiety. They're always complaining and they're always finding the faults, right? So we can never fully develop as a confident human being, as a positive human being, somebody that values ourselves, right? So negative self-talk disorder, to me, became this kind of running joke of like, well, I bet you that's going to become a disorder in the future. Here's why. We love to label things and we love to make things disorders so that we can then say, and I hear this so often in the ADHD world and it drives me nuts when people say, oh, once I got diagnosed, Oh, I felt so much better because now I could explain why life has been so hard. And while I totally get it, I get it. Look, I never want to negate someone's struggle. And if someone's having a good time for a few months where they feel like, oh, that explains everything, right? Then I'm okay with them having that, have at it, but it ain't going to solve the issue. Here's why. In this case, if people are negative self-talkers, right, and you get diagnosed with negative self-talk, 
and now you have an STD. I love saying it because it really sounds like you have an STD, but that really is the abbreviation, negative self-talk disorder. So if you get diagnosed with it and you suddenly go, oh, I have an STD, that's why I talk negatively to myself. Oh, I got it. Think about it. Does that actually explain why you talk yourself to yourself negatively? No. Well, it's the same thing with ADHD. It's to say, oh, I see, based on this, the bunch of, of observed behaviors that we call symptoms that we label ADHD, that's why I have those symptoms, because it's the ADHD. No. That's not why, but that's how we live. That's how people with ADHD, they treat it like that. Oh, now that I know what it is, that explains everything. No, it does not. It does not explain why you behave that way. It does not explain why your brain is wired that way. And it's a bit of a, a little bit of a mind twister. And I invite you, if you haven't listened to episode 158, ADHD cannot cause ADHD. It's a tricky one. And I'm really after, I've been after this for years now, having talked to experts like Gabor Mate, Bruce Lipton, Stephen Porges, Vessel van der Kolk, Erica Commissar, and lots of powerful experts that all are saying the same thing. And it really points to this phenomena that we think just because there's a diagnosis that has been created by doctors that is a label that we then stick on these symptoms that that explains why we are the way we are and that's simply not true so in this case i wanted to make a joke like in the future it could actually be possible that there's a disorder called the negative self-talk disorder and here's the kicker if you think about it if i was up for creating disorders and i was like hey let's create this disorder right? Because then we can sell something to people so they can actually improve, right? So I'm going to give someone out there a great idea here. It's kind of cheeky, but I think it's a good idea. So imagine if you're someone with negative self-talk disorder, well, you're going to be talking to yourself negatively a lot of times during the day, right? At home, at work, and so forth. So if there was a device powered by AI, of course, that you wear that records your talk and actually pretty much figures out percentage wise how much of your self talk is negative and how much of it is positive, then you could start to diagnose people and say, if you, you'd have to sort of set the, the mark, or you'd have to say, if somebody talks to them negatively for more than 60 or 50% of the day or 60% of the day, it's a disorder. It should be under 60, right? You, you would have to set those markers. And then you have a disorder because now you, through technology, can prove to people that, hey, this thing just recorded you for 24 hours, seven days, or say 30 days in a row. And here's the graph. Look at this. You've talked to yourself negatively for 65% of the time. Well, the marker is 60%. If you're over 60%, it's now a disorder. And here's what we offer, right? So then you can offer uh, therapies, um, you know, uh, 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 counseling, workshops, and so forth for it. You can offer the device, right? The one that you use to measure it. Uh, there's a whole business you can start. This is how a lot of our disorders are created. They're created with, obviously, the solution in mind. So we just have to be very aware of that. And so while this episode is, is a bit of a, a, a jokey episode around this made-up disorder called NSTD, negative self-talk disorder, we also have to remember that the same principles apply for our, the, the known disorders we have out there, including something like ADHD, where, yes, you may feel good for a while, and I'd love to always follow up with the people who first say, oh my God, once I got diagnosed and you know, then when I knew what it was, now I, I explained everything. 
I'd want to follow up with them six months later. Of like, how's it going? What, what kind of work are you doing? And most of them probably will just say, well, I started taking meds and I'm fine. And again, you know how I feel about meds. Yeah, you're fine. You may be suddenly more productive and you may focus more, but you're not actually going to the root cause of your behavior. You're not actually healing anything. You're not actually going where you need to go so that you can be independent, sovereign of being dependent on an external substance to make you feel whole in life and functional. It is my belief that we are built that way, that we can heal ourselves, that we can function in the world or find our path, that we can be fulfilled human beings without being dependent on external substances or external things or external humans, right? We, we have, even in the case of self-love, you know, it's a void that we cannot fill with the love of another. We are literally built like sovereign beings, of course, we don't survive in sovereignty because we do need other people connection wise, but we can heal ourselves. We can love ourselves. We can restore ourselves. We can be sovereign without the dependency on anything external. Now you could go in there and say, well, what about the sun? And what about the, yeah, there's, that's what I meant. There's things that we need to be connected to, to survive, right? But there's a difference between needing sunlight and being addicted to a substance to make us feel like we're actually even here and we matter, right? So I don't want to get uh, sidetracked too much here, but the point of this episode is just a little bit of a wake-up call to look around in our society and to be aware of all the mechanisms and the structures that we, we've put into place to to label people, to put them in boxes, right? So we can control it or we feel safe or we feel, oh, good, I'm glad this is labeled away and boxed away. Now I can go to sleep. Now I don't feel like I need to do more work on it or whatever, right? And so when it comes to these disorders, right, we're going to see more and more pop up. They're going to be like products that the pharmaceutical companies and the psychiatry together are going to figure out. I've already heard of... Um, there was the slow cognitive tempo, SCT, Russell Barkley always talks about that. And I think now by now it's a full-blown disorder. And we hear about the seasonal, I forget what it's called, but it's like seasonal depression or something. Look, I'm not doubting that certain people get depressed around certain times of the year and holidays, but that has nothing to do with, that's not a disorder. That's not a thing that suddenly showed up genetically that you're affected by and you just have it. That is all psychosomatic. That is all based on experiences past like red flags, traumas in life that suddenly during a certain time of year, you feel perhaps more sad than during other times of the year. That's just not a disorder, but we're making it into a disorder. So that's why I'm saying well, it wouldn't surprise me if years from now, the negative self-talk disorder is a real thing. It's probably going to happen. You know, so just be aware of it, especially as a parent, you know, you're going to hear lots of experts throw these disorder names and these symptom names out there. And for us, the, our, our most important job is to just simply ask and say, well, what's the root cause? What's causing the behavior? It can't be the disorder itself because the disorder itself is a name, a label made up to describe the bunch of symptoms. So it can't be the disorder causing the symptoms. If you know what I mean, it's such a mind trick, but really when we look at it that way, when we start asking people, well, what do you think it's going to cause? And that's why I love the work of Gabor Mate, his latest book, The Myth of Normal and all his other books as well. He really digs deep and he really explores this idea that, look, there are things that happen to us in our lives and then we respond to them like a coping mechanism. Another podcast guest of ours, Erica Commissar, calls it a response to stress, right? In, sim in a simpler term, how we respond to stress, right? In our childhood can become a coping mechanism and eventually what I call an addiction to distraction and eventually it's ADHD or a disorder and now we think we're broken and we have this thing and that explains why we are that way. But it doesn't. 
It really doesn't. Now, look, if you want to get diagnosed, you want to know you have ADHD and that explains something for you, that's great. That's going to last you as long as a brand new car. The excitement of a brand new car lasts. And then it's going to fade. And at some point, you're going to be faced with having to do the real healing work. And if that's all hidden and suppressed under medication, well, then your body and your spirit is going to wait until the medication ends and then you'll have to do the work. So there's no never being able, you can't outrun the pain is what I'm saying. We can't outrun the pain. We can't outrun the need for healing. It will come back to us and remind us that we need to do the work. And unfortunately for a lot of people, it comes in the form of death where it's over. It's done because their body just can't heal anymore. It's been damaged psychosomatically, right? Through the mind, through the body, and spiritually even corrupted. And they're just gone. It's over, right? And that's, yeah, it's sad. Of course it is. But it's how our bodies and our spirits and our soul, and that's how it all functions. If we don't take the hints, if we don't listen to the messages, to the signs that we're given, that our body is not well, our mind's not well, that we need to heal and process something and not suppress it, not numb it with a substance or a medication or what, with an addiction, but to actually stop distracting from what really needs attention, which is the healing of our past traumas. Again, the response to stress, if we don't heal that now, it will come back to remind us that it still needs healing, even if we've suppressed it with medication for a long time. That's all I wanted to say. So no, negative self-talk disorder is not a real disorder. If it ever gets created, please do not credit me with it. I simply use this <laughs> as a little bit of a cheeky approach to make a point. But if you're going to go out and create it and you're going to make a lot of money with it, shoot me 10% and I'll donate it. I'll donate it to a cause uh, somewhat related to family healing. I promise you that. All right. Thanks for listening. Like I always say, if you've given your attention here, even just for a minute, I appreciate that. Your attention is your most valuable commodity and you've given it generously. And like I said, if you'd like more information on the podcast, the movement, the documentary, sign up for a newsletter so we can keep you in the loop. If you're interested in downloading our free ADHD diagnosis survival, <sighs> survival guide PDF, you can do so on our website, ADHDsover.com, and you will find out also more about coaching there because I'd love to work with you and your family to see how I can support you and the family to bring calmness back to the home calm nervous systems, right? Co-regulating together. That is the goal. Thank you. Have an amazing day. Until next time. Cheers. Cheers.